please do. Good morning, everybody. Before we get started, I'd just like to first thank everybody that came out to help clean the parsonage on Thursday, uh, Claudia and Mike, um, Debbie Broderick, and Ursula Pinkney. I appreciate them coming out to do that. Um, we have done a lot of work over there. The pastor's moving in on Tuesday. Uh, his moving truck is coming on Tuesday. So we're gonna open up the parsonage today after church. If anybody would like to walk through, this will be your one and only opportunity to see it before they move in. Um, and on Tuesday and, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Thursday, his moving truck will be here, all of his stuff. If anybody can help set things up, he will be coming up by himself because uh, Kristen cannot come, she's still working. If you can help with uh, putting things together, moving stuff, just let me know. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it a great one? Yes. How do we get such a day? Because God loves us. And even when it storms and limbs blow over, as they may have done in your neighborhood, they did in mine, this past uh, uh, end of the week here, God still loves us. Uh, and we may even hear something about that today in greater detail. Well, welcome, those who visit, uh, uh, regular members, those who are with us online. We are here to worship, and our opening hymn needs to be taken seriously because God himself is present. And so we begin.
If you are able, would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Ah. forever. 
Amen. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're seated for the readings. Our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 7. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our epistle reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who were called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th mm. chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who in finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, he said to them? Yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are seated for the singing of the hymn.
You may be seated. Let me uh, reread a few of the verses from the uh, second scripture lesson from the eighth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And after that, I'll invite the children to come forward and uh, speak with them briefly. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our text, and I invite the children to come forward. I'd like to speak briefly with them. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Let's see. Can somebody read something for me? What do we got here? Trouble. trouble. You know what trouble is? Might be a brother or sister sometimes, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, what's this other stuff here? Hunger. Hunger. Have you ever been hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even now. Danger. Mm. Danger. Yeah. And this last Scary time? Times. Scary times. Are you familiar with any of this stuff here? Yeah? Okay, let's see here. All right, now, I want you to look at this, and I want you to read, God loves me. God loves me. Where is that on there? Nowhere. I told you to read it, not to say it. Why can't you read it? Because it's not there. What is there? Trouble, hunger, danger. Yeah, all that other stuff, huh? You see, all this other stuff can get in our way of seeing God's love. Yeah. Well, let's see. Is God's love out there? Yeah, it is. Okay. Look at it again here. All right. Is Well, can you see God's love now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you see, that's the way God is. When all this kind of stuff comes our way, does that stop him from loving us? No. no, sometimes we might misunderstand. Have you ever, ooh, I don't know about this, have you ever said to your mom and dad if they didn't give you everything you wanted, you don't love me? Yeah. <laughs> kids do say that sometimes. Big kids may not say it out loud, but in their mind. Do you love me, God? Don't let this stuff get in the way. God loves us all the time. And he will love us through this stuff, and he will do away with this stuff, but give us his love every day. We're going to hear more about that. You can go back to your places. We are conquerors through him who loved us. You, you, you can't end the sentence after the word conquerors. Because if you end it there, it's not true. We're not conquerors of anything. But through him who loved us, we are conquerors over everything. You see, victory is something we want. Uh, anybody here a 
like to play games, board games. We play Catan and uh, Carcassonne. Those are some of our favorites and so on. And as we sit down to the table, everybody says, I hope you win. I don't want to win today. I hope you win. No, that's, that's a lie. It's never happened. Not in our house, not in the house of our children, not in the house of friends. Never have I heard anybody say that when we sat down to play games. Uh, how are you in the, uh, participating in any sports? Uh, I used to be involved with soccer and gymnastics. And uh, we never put on our uniforms and said, I hope the other team wins. Of course not. We want to win. Even playing against the family we love. We want to win. That's, that's a part of who we are. And we want to be able to be in control so in those games or those sports events, you know, we kind of study and learn, how can we control the ball? How can we can control the situation? How can we control the game pieces that we're working with, huh? And that's the way it is with our own life. We want to be able to control and direct the events of our life as they unfold. How's that going for you, by the way? Hmm. I know, haven't heard anybody say, great, great, I'm succeeding. No, no, no. Well, young men, uh, get married and uh, try to control situations. Uh, you're going to get laughed at. Uh, uh, use your gifts, your abilities, yes, yes. But if you want to control, no, it doesn't work that way, does it? You know, after all, Marriage is a 100%, 100% situation, not 50-50. If you go into it 50-50, you are going to lose. You're going to really be disappointed. Our relationship with God is not 50-50. No. It's 100% nothing. All good comes from God. You see... Because we want to be conquerors and forget the part about through the love of God in Christ Jesus, we, we feel like we lose. We feel like we're on the losing side so often in our life. When things don't go the way we feel badly, when they don't go the way we hope, we feel badly, might even feel unloved. Hmm. You see, we heard the children admitting that they might have even said, you don't love me, when they didn't get their way. Well, sometimes we also can't hide that self-centered immaturity in our relationship with God. Sometimes we're confronted with discipline. Hmm. Do you know what, what word is good to connect with discipline? Love. A parent who loves their child disciplines them, right? Because discipline is, means teaching. Teaching. Does God love you? And you don't expect discipline? You're so perfect? Don't have to be disciplined? No, we need that. God loves us enough to do it. 
You see, in our house, we disciplined our children. They had chores every day. Too many today don't. We set limits. Why is the world so wacky? Because there don't seem to be any limits in some homes. Hmm? How many parents complain to teachers when their children mess up instead of dealing with their children according to what is right? You see, God loves you and me. When we feel limited, when we, 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 we don't get to do what we want, we don't like the fact that we're, we're not in control of everything. Oh my, oh my. Sometimes we confuse being loved with getting our own way and having the things we want. We don't like frustration. And a lot of the frustration in our life is uh, the result of our own thoughts, our own deeds. Hmm. Even when it comes to God's love, we may doubt if things aren't going as well for us as we hoped, we planned. Now, the, the text from Romans here affirms that God's love is a maybe, maybe not situation. Is that the way it's confirmed? No. no. God's love is absolute. Now, in modern society, nothing is absolute, is it? Everything is kind of flexible, able to be redefined. Marriage isn't marriage as God gave it. Redefined as some horrible aberration. Our own gender. Redefinable. A society that condones that needs discipline, don't you think? Hmm? You know, I was the good boy in our family. My cute little sister, well, that's another story. My older brother and sister were nearing maturity as I and my little sister were growing up. But guess what? When one of us got in trouble and got disciplined, did that bring joy to the rest of us? No! We all suffered because of my little sister's misbehaviors and my once or twice misbehavior. No, no, I wasn't the good little boy. I acted like it, but uh, God saw through it, and uh, he still found ways to discipline me, even if I got away with something with my parents. And I thank God for it. You see, when we fail him, which is something we do every day, of course, I mean, that's what sin is, isn't it? Failing to serve as God brought us into this world to serve. Remember, love is S-E-R-V-E. -E, that's how you spell it. And we don't do much loving and serving while we expect a lot of loving and service. You see, our failure, and did you read that with, with understanding? 
in the confession of faith today, that we love our neighbor as ourself, you know, about the stuff we've done and uh, haven't done, that sin. Hmm? You see, that has nothing to do with God's love as far as refraining it. God loves us. And, you know, parents, as they raise their children, if their children go off the track a little bit, does that stop their parents' love? No. They love even harder to try to get them back on track. Hmm? Our sin never limits God's love. We may feel unloved because we failed, because we admit our guilt, because we do suffer the consequences of our sin. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the disciplinary action of God, isn't it? Hmm? Hmm? But we are loved through all of that. God deals with us always in his love. We're loved because of who God is, not because of what we have done or not done. God shows his love, reminding us that if any was in, in Christ, there is no, no more condemnation. That's just a few chapters earlier in St. Paul's letter here. Chapter 5. Read that. It's, oh, oh, it's such a great recognition that no condemnation. Not because we're good. No, 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 no. Because we're in Christ. Remember, that's what happened at the baptismal font, right? The Bible tells us we were united with Christ in our baptism united in his life, his death, and his resurrection. So the Father sees us as his son, no matter what gender we are. We are his son in Christ. He sees Jesus, his innocence, his perfection, his righteousness, covering ours, covering us. You see, who did Jesus die for? Hmm. Good question. You see, the Jews of a few thousand years ago expected the Messiah to come to them because they were <laughs> law keepers. <laughs> they were people who honored God. They were the descendants of Abraham. And of course, God was going to do them good with their Messiah. And when Jesus came, even those who recognized he must be the Messiah, oh, he's going to help us with the Romans. Man, oh man. He raises from the dead. We don't have to worry about going into combat because we will be raised from the dead in that situation. And we don't need to carry all that baggage, all that food, because... As long as we just got a couple loaves and, and a, a few fish, he'll feed the whole army. Yeah! Because we're Abraham's children. Well, no, Jesus didn't come to fulfill their dreams, those self-centered dreams. Jesus doesn't come into your life to fulfill your self-centered dreams either. He comes into your and my life to draw us close to himself, to his Father. And that's why he died on the cross, in your place and mine, with your and my sin, causing his quick death and crucifixion. Usually crucifixion deaths lasted days. His was just a few hours. Because the whole world's sin was on him. 
yours and mine. But he rose, and the Bible says that that means new life for you and me. Even now, not just at the last day when we will be raised physically, but even now, a new kind of life. A life that is not overly burdened by the self-centeredness that still keeps trying to raise its head, but a life that has new power through the Holy Spirit which you received in your baptism. And the Holy Spirit job, the Bible says, is to remind us of these things that Jesus taught. The Holy Spirit's job is always to remind us of Jesus in our life, His love, His forgiveness, His power, His victory. You see, His love for us is that forgiveness and that spiritual maturity that enables us to serve as more mature children of God. God has chores for you and me. Look around you. Maybe you've got family nearby or sitting with you. Friends up few or there, a few away. Neighbors back home. Uh, God put you there, put you here, so that you can learn to serve, that I can learn to serve and to be about his mission. You know, exciting days are ahead for First Lutheran here. I'm going to be with you, God willing, uh, another couple Sundays. But then the, the long-awaited new pastor is coming. Hmm? Moving in. I wonder who's going to help him. I wonder who's going to see that this is home for him now and his wife and daughter. Huh. Whose job is that? The elder's job? Uh, whose job is it? I want to see some hands. Four people. I was just about to end the sermon, but it looks like I'm going to need to say some more. <laughs> but for the sake of the four or five, I'm going to be gracious and merciful. You see, you've waited years for a new pastor, right? What was God doing in those years with First Lutheran and its membership? Huh. You know, waiting to see that our prayers are answered, isn't that also a kind of discipline? Ah, well, individually our goal is not, our God-given goal is not to have a carefree life, but a life of caring for those around us. Caring for those around us, bringing the love of Christ to bear into every relationship. There are people you and I need to forgive. Sometimes it takes a long while to understand how important that is. Sometimes we're sick and have headaches and back aches because we're carrying that burden. <laughs> Well, forgive it. And maybe some of those backaches and headaches will diminish as they did in my life. Huh. You see, good days are ahead because God is in this day with you and tomorrow and in this congregation for a purpose. so that others will know that nothing can separate them from the love of God, from his forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts 
and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And if you are able, would you please stand as we prepare to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, beginning on page 6 in our service folder. We so confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from that he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We lift up to the Lord those who have asked to be remembered because of their need for health, for healing, for strength, for encouragement, for counsel. So we lift up before the Lord Elizabeth Liut, Larry Nelson, Mary Rice, Heather Cummins, Emmanuel Gambo, Alana Takwi, Michael Jacobs, Cece Goodwin, Matthew Lewis, Wayne Van Dyne, Maria, Heather and Willard, Donald Crossett, Linda Krieger, Bill Krieger, Elaine Harris, Carol Cope, Dolores Sars, Michael Mallory, Barbara and Tom Girgash, Andrew Martin, Rachel Stevens, Arthur, Rachel Calkins, Melissa Janiel Layton, Elizabeth Zachary, Janice Stevens, Peggy Stubbe, Zach Averett, Peggy Casebolt, Cindy Holmes, Francis Koenig, Sophia Cummins, Rob Krause, Chris and Chuck Churches, Bill Carey, Ada Lusk, Karen Averett, O oh Lord, all these we commend into your hands, thanking you for your loving work already in their life, thanking you for the gifts that you give of, uh, of medicine, of, of uh, health care workers, of counselors, of Christian family and friends. May all of these be useful in each case according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for those who grieve. We pray for the uh, loved ones of uh, Han Zias, Glenn Zabel, Bob Pellot. Thanking you, O oh Lord, that always you remind us that death is not the last word, but rather the door through which those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will rise again to new life. And may this comfort be with all those who grieve at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. We pray for First Lutheran Congregation as uh, uh, this congregation prepares to receive their new pastor and his family. We thank you, Lord, for this gift, for the answer to prayer, not just for First Lutheran, but for the whole community. May the congregation and the new pastor serve well together to your glory and for the joy of the whole surrounding community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in our military and for those who serve as first responders in our community, thanking you for all who are willing to make great sacrifices so that there may be peace and order and uh, appropriate action in case of disaster. Watch over all of those who serve so willingly and grant them your protection, O Lord, that they may return home at the end of their service. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for the leaders of our nation and our uh, local communities, thanking you here again that some are willing to uh, uh, enter such service. But we pray also, Lord, that you would uh, awaken them to the recognition of, of humble service to which they have been called. May they use their positions not for self-service, but rather to bring law and order and safety to their communities, to our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continually pray about the lawlessness that is evident at this time. So many people who disrespect law and each other. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would uh, uh, awaken a new understanding in the lives of these troubled people and of those who care for them, that uh, they might also guide them in a way that sets aside such bold self-centeredness. Lord, we pray that those who have the responsibility to carry out the law would do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dealing with natural disasters, for those who are, are dealing with some uh, severe temperatures at this time, and we pray that you, O oh Lord, would, would provide relief from some of these things in ways that uh, uh, we are, can also benefit by and participate in. For those who are coming to the rescue of those uh, uh, who have suffered floods and, and fires, we pray that uh, God's uh, people would also uh, provide help wherever they are able to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Always we pray for courage for ourselves also, that we might be bold as your witnesses in our families, in our workplaces and schools and our community. Help us not keep our mouths shut, but rather open and ready to honor you and to discipline those with whom we are engaged so that they might come to know the truth and your wonderful love through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are seated for the offering.
If you are able, would you please stand as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, we took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember the glorious, the, the remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
If you're able, would you please stand for the blessing? May this holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.